again, everyone. We welcome you to Herm Miller Gymnasium in the Supreme Court in Ottawa Glandorf, where the Titans of OG look for their third consecutive perfect sweep through the Western Buckeye League as they close out the regular season tonight against the Wildcats of Kenton. With Miles Holiday, I'm Randy Roberts. Partner, here we are, final night of the regular season uh, in mass for high school boys basketball. Few games on Saturday here and there, but girls sectional finals really take the stage around the area. So final full Friday and a lot to play for for the Titans of OG. They look to extend their long winning streak in the WBL, as we said, trying to go three straight years without a loss in the Western Buckeye League. Well, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? This is a huge game for OG, Randy. You mentioned it, three straight uh, WBL titles. And it's a big game for um, Kenton as well. 11 and 10, want to get some momentum. Everybody knows we're going into sectional district play. You want to get some momentum. And hey, what a great way to get some momentum than stop a giant win streak in the WBL here out of Glandor. Look for a great effort by Kenton here tonight. And I'm excited because I get to call it with Mr. Razzle Dazzle himself. Randy Roberts. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Wildcats of Kenton. Like you said, Miles, 11 and 10 overall, 2 and 6 in the Western Buckeye League this year, led by head coach Ryan Miller, coming off losses to Shawnee 76 48 and Marion Pleasant, where they felt 58 56 in overtime. That snapped a three game winning streak. And like everyone else, they know what their tournament uh, assignment is. They're going to play in a sectional final a week from tonight at St. Mary's in Division 2. This is a team that's scoring. About 56 points a game, and uh, just under half of that come from a couple of seniors that could put the ball in the hoop. Yeah, they shoot about 45% overall. Problem is, their opponents will shoot much more, many more free throws than them. But you talk about some guys that can score the basketball for them, Gavin Payne and Ethan Yoder. 13 and 12 points a, a piece. They're going to have to rely big time on those seniors. Hey, you talk about the shooting. Payne adds about six and a half rebounds, two assists, 55%. From the floor, Yoder goes about seven rebounds, three assists as well, and he can shoot about 40% from behind the arc. So they do have some guys that can fill it up a little bit, but like you said, it's playing some defense. It's kind of been the biggest trouble this year for the Wildcats. That and depth, right? They, they've been really hampered by not creating any depth that can kind of help those guys out. Kind of, kind of a big two needs someone to be a big three here tonight if they're going to pull the upset against OG. All right, let's turn our attention now to the Titans of Ottawa Glandor, for currently ranked third in the latest state basketball poll in Division Three, 18 and three overall. We've said it a couple of times, eight and zero, oh, looking for a nine and zero, oh, which would be their third straight perfect run in the Western Buckeye League on the two-game winning streak as they knocked off Defiance last week on the road. Miles and I saw that one, 59-36. Then I had a tough one against Lexington, 58-54, one of those tournament-type games, one of those games you put specifically on your schedule to get you ready for the tournament. The dating back, they've won eight of their last nine. They also know what their tournament assignment's going to be. It's going to be right back here at home next Friday. They're going to get either Van Buren or Elmwood in a Division Three sectional final. And I feel like well, we've been here, what, three, four times already this year and uh, kind of running out of superlatives to say <laughs> for some of the guys of the Titans can absolutely fill it up. Uh, well, one thing is certain. If you're a player and you want a night off, don't play for Tyson McLaughlin, right? Because <laughs> he is going to schedule nothing but tough competition to get you ready for tournament time. And they have responded every single time. Now, people are saying, well, how'd they lose three times? Well, you got to look at the teams that they played, right? They do not back away from tough competition, but when they get to tournament time, they are going to be razor sharp. Yeah, and led by Colin White, the Ohio State commit, 24 points, eight rebounds, three assists tonight. Caden Erford, another senior like White, 14 points and six rebounds, and those two were two of a handful of seniors honored before this one tonight on senior night. Yeah, been a great senior group, and if you're going to defeat Ottawa Glandorf, you have to take care of the basketball, and you have to limit their opportunities behind the arc. That's a team that loves to shoot the three ball and makes about eight a game. So looking forward to what should be a good one. We're going to take a time out when we come back. We'll get to our keys to the game and get the opening tip here as you're watching high school basketball on WOSN. here from the Supreme Court, Ottawa Glandor, where they're going through the introductions of the starting lineups tonight. That'll give us a chance to go through some keys to the game for this one. And partner, let's start with the visiting Kenton Wildcats. Yeah, number one for the Wildcats, don't foul. 
their opponents have shot 79 more free throws than them. They can't afford to let Ottawa Glendorf get three points at the free throw line. Don't foul anybody. Number two, ball movement. Make sure not only make good passes, but Randy, good fakes because they average 15 turnovers a game. And we all know Ottawa Glendorf, they love to take turnovers and convert them into points. And then number three, be a big pain. Who could be a big pain? Well, that'd be Gavin Payne. He needs to have a big night for them. He is a guy that can do it. 13 points a game seven rebounds. You mentioned his high percentage of 55%, 74 to free throw line, and 26 from three. Kevin Payne's going to have to be big. So it looks like a change for Kenton for us. Stephen Piper wearing number zero, not the 23 that we had on our rosters. All right, some keys to the game tonight now for the homestanding Titans of Ottawa Glendor. Yeah, number one, have fun. We saw them against Defiance a week ago, you and I, and it looked like they are kind of worn down, like they weren't lot, having a lot of fun, right? They're supposed to be having fun, so go after it. Have some fun tonight. It is senior night. Make sure the seniors get off to a, a great start and a great send-off. And number two, embrace physicality. Anytime you're really good, your opponent is going to try and equalize it by being real physical with you. Make sure you embrace that and you're physical right back. And then number three, yo, you want to see something cool? I'll show you something cool. If you like dunks, it's going to be some Dunkalicious time here tonight. Colin White, last time we had him, three dunks in that ball mm -hmm. game. This is a team that can play above the rim. You want to see something cool? Just hang out with us. Cool Colin White. We'll deliver something. And it looks like a uh, small change to the starting lineup tonight for Ottawa Glandorf as well. Honoring some of their seniors, I guess it's tough to uh, to start five when you got eight on the roster. But Alex Wagner, Grant Schrader, Connor Kitchen, Dave Westring, Caden Erford, the starting lineup tonight for the Titans here on senior night. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that we're going to see Colin White at some time. Tonight. I have a feeling 22 will, will be in pretty quick. Make sure you tweet out real quick, Colin White benched. <laughs> see if you can get that trending. See what happens here. Oh, what, what happened? There's bad blood with him and the coach. Why isn't he in the lineup? <laughs> so looking forward to this. This meeting, by the way, the 58th all-time between these two. OG has absolutely dominated the all-time series, winning 49 to just eight for Kenton. Kenton sporting the... Uh, 1997 Cincinnati Bearcats. Yeah, that's a good call. Uniforms. Yeah, very good call. I was going to call on that also. The man-to-man -man defense early, played by Kent. Kitchen comes top of the key, corner three. That one no good. Rebounds fought for, went through a couple sets of hands. Schrader's going to save it. Had to throw that back into play as he's about ready to cross the timeline into the paint. He'll drive the lane, gets the kick out. Up top for Wagner. Wagner's going to have it poked away. But the possession is stay saved. And now here's Erford. Erford's going to have the dribble go off his leg or off his foot. This one's going to end up in the backcourt out of bounds. And it's going to stay with the Titans. Yeah, nice job by Piper poking it free. He's going to be a rowdy one on the perimeter. Broadcast tonight brought to you by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick. See them for all of your commercial and residential concrete needs. Kitchen had the ball momentarily. Erford at the wing, gives off the screen and gets the kickback. Sends it over the top. Here's Connor Kitchen from the wing. His three hits off the iron. Long rebound. It's going to be corralled by Ethan Yoder. Hey, even though they came away scoreless on that trip, they got an offensive rebound out of it. And they had two really good looks from behind the arc. Yoder, good spin. Double clutches on the pass. Kick out in the wing three. That one in and out. Westrick gets the rebound. And the outlet, out, outlet excuse me, is for Erford. Erford with a give for Alex Wagner. Wagner through the lane, goes up. That one's going to bang off the side of the backboard. And now we're going to have a whistle and a foul going for the rebound. Wildcat foul number 25. Gavin Payne, his first. Kingsford. Gavin Payne guilty to foul. Looks like a uniform number change there as well. Well, that's kind of costly this early, picking up your first one. Keep an eye on Gavin Payne and how he plays defensively, knowing picking up a second one early in the first half will be a huge problem. Alex Wagner gets the first point from our Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. See Lee's re uh, Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Devils, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Now an over and back is going to lead to a turnover. A little full court man. They trapped right across half court. Normally this is a 1-2-2 pressure team, but 
going full court with the current lineup on the floor for OG. It's 2 nothing early on in our scoreboard tonight, brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. Getting inside is Caden Erford. He's going to get the first field goal tonight as OG leads this one 4 nothing. Yeah, really good basketball IQ displayed by Caden Erford right there. Saw the double. Nobody was on him, so make your dive towards the rim. You'll get a pass and an easy layup. And breaking news right now, Colin White has entered the game. Ken's going to take a quick timeout here. They want to talk about a few things down 4 nothing. One of those things, you kind of take one early before this one gets out of hand, right? That's the problem when you play OG, right? They can score so quickly, you're not taking care of the basketball. Next thing you know, you're down by double digits. So, and we do have a three-pointer tonight. It is a Kent Moose three-pointer. The Kent Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton online at kentonmoose428.com. It's 4 nothing OG here, 6 11 left to go in our opening quarter. Wildcats with the basketball still in the backcourt following first time out of the night. Blaine Bushong has it. Bushong's going to have it taken away. Trying to get inside to White. There's one off the side of the iron. White has the outlet sent back into his face, and now it is Ken in transition. And the bunny doesn't go. Ball's out of bounds, and it looks like it's going to belong to the Titans. Yeah, it's one that Gavin Payne's going to watch tomorrow and say, oh, I wish I'd get that back. One that he normally makes. Point blank range needed that basket in a big way for Kenton. Titans going up against the pressure from Kenton as they pick it up in the half court. White skips this one across the top. Wagner with it over to Erford. Erford's going to draw the double back to Wagner. Good entry pass inside to Westrick, who's going to get the drop step, lays it in. Yeah, Westrick, huge size advantage over Dawson Miller inside. 6'11 versus 5'11. Don't do more than what you need to. Just a little baby hook to get it. 6 0 now in favor of the Titans here. We're not quite to the halfway point of our opening quarter on our ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Here's a ball deflected out of bounds. That is a lot of length up top for Ottawa Glandorf. Erford at 6'4", Colin White at 6'6", and arms that just go forever. They will cover that front court. See some more of the regular starting lineup for Ottawa Glandorf making their way in as Grady Tumazos, Ross Mag now into the lineup for the Titans. Yeah, Tumazos, a guy that has been really good offensively. And we might see him our first dunk of the night. Just to steal it a go for Colin White. Uh, yes, you can, Double Deuce, a little dunk alicious. Yo, you want to see something cool? There you go. 8 nothing. three ball from the corner. That one's going to be up no good. White's going to have the rebound one-hander. I'm sorry, it's Erford. And then shielding everything away from the basketball. There's one from point blank range. That one's going to be off the mark. And now Kenton wants to slow this one up, still needing to get on the scoreboard. Bushong walks this one into the front court, nearly slipped down, being defended by Tomazos. Up top for Piper. Piper gets that jab step, spins, tried to shake his defender, couldn't do it. Now has it back out at the wing, trying to find somewhere to go. He's going to back up, try to reset the offense. A little size mismatch there. Now going with the left hand, that's going to be no good. Erford has it as the official is going to fall down. Looks like everyone's going to be all right. Wet spot on the court. And now, outlet is going to lead to a good layup for Ethan Yoder. That breaks that scoring drought that started the game for Kenton Yoder all by himself. Easy layup, now only a six point margin. White in the corner sends this one over the top. Tomazos will bury the Kenton Moose three pointer. Our broadcast colleague, Darren Gilbert, Gilly called it GT3 every time Tomazos hits. Three-pointer left short in the other end for Bushon. Now the Titans with it, up 11 to two. And we're gonna have ourselves an offensive foul. That easy call, just a little bit out of control. One of the few offensive mistakes Ottawa Glandorf has made tonight. 
Brody Fortman, Connor Kitchen in now for Ottawa Glandorf. Titans lead this one 11 2 as we near the three minute mark of our opening quarter. Ethan Yoder able to bring this one into the front court. Yoder double teams, have the ball knocked out of his hands and out of bounds. It'll stay with the Wildcats. A really nice job defensively by Connor Kitchen that time. Coming over, stopping the dribble drive. Can you think of a team that is better fundamentally defensively than Ottawa Glendorf? I have not seen one this year. I know, they just do things so well on the defensive end. Such a cohesive group. Bushon gives it into the corner. Oh, for Gavin Payne. Payne comes out to the wing. Payne with that left hand is cut off to Mazos. Gets the kick out back for Corbin Johnston. And now the elbow jumper is going to be no good as Piper is knocked down after the shot. Now we'll have a whistle and a foul. Yeah, Piper unfortunately falls down. And he's going to get the foul. He's like, oh, look, all I did was fall down. They fell over top of me. But you're not allowed to be a speed bump on the floor. Remember that, kids. You can't be a speed bump. So Piper's going to pick up the foul. And it's going to be the team's second on the Wildcats here. Two and a half minutes left to go open the quarter in our ultimate outdoor scoreboard. It's Tomazos. He's going to try his second three. Buries it. A Tomazos release rotation and GT for three. And again, our three pointers tonight are brought to you by the Kent Moose Family Center. The Kent Moose is Hardin County's home for great food fellowship and friends. That's Kent Moose 428 in Kenton online at kentmoose428.com. Make it three. Kent Moose three pointers here in the opening quarter for Ottawa Glen North that time. None other than Colin White, who proves he can do more than dunk a basketball. <laughs> Big time snacking on danger here for Kenton. Down by 15, might want to get a timeout, slow things down. Just under two minutes left to go opening quarter in our ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Again, trying to get something going. Wild shot put up there by Blaine Bushong. It's going to be no good, but put back up and good. Yeah, Gavin Payne just outworking everybody, getting the errant shot and putting it back in and allows Kenton to go back to this zone look, but kind of tough to stay in it because Ottawa Glendorf shoots so well on the perimeter. Tomazos, yeah, and right on cue. That one's going to be a little too strong. Colin White to the rebound, knocked back to him, where he's able to work the lane, gets in and scores. Yeah, Blaine Bushong's going to learn you can't back tap it to your own basket, right? Colin White all by himself takes the gift and makes an easy two. And now Kenton's going to turn this over as Ethan Yoder is going to catch the sideline and step out of bounds with a minute eight left to go in the opening quarter. OG will force the turnover. Cowan White will inbound. Fifteen point lead now for the Titans. Here with a minute left to go in the opening quarter. Kerford gets rid of it. They do such a great job of moving the basketball quickly, don't they? Yeah, it never ends up in one player's hands for too long. Herford's got it right now. As I say that, he holds for an extra beat. And Greg Popovich would absolutely love their offensive philosophy. Ball movement continuously. Going to reset here. And there's nobody in Northwest Ohio that does end of quarter situations better than Ottawa Glandorf, now underneath 30. White's pass goes into the corner where the Kenton Moose three is up and good by Kate Nerford. Yeah, young man that had 10 when we were here a couple of weeks ago. Stays red hot. And Ken able to come back with a big three-pointer there. Gavin Payne able to answer. So 22-7 here under 10 seconds left in the quarter. White had it poked away. Ball's out of bounds. And it looks like it's going to stay with the Titans with 4.7 to go in the quarter. I think initially it was signaled that it was going to go to Ken, but you heard all the groans and moans of this OG crowd. Lob comes in to Westry, gets the kick out. Three ball's going to be no good, and that's all Kenton can do as the first quarter will come to a close. But a big opening quarter for OG. Titans in front, 22-7 after one. We'll take a break here on WOSF. Twenty-two seven Ottawa Glandorf for the lead over Kenton after one. Our scoreboard tonight again brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. 
Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. Now this defense for Ottawa Glandorf is absolutely suffocating. Here comes another trap. A couple passes able to break that for the Wildcats. And now travel is going to be called. So Kenton does turn this one back over to the Titans. Hey, this speeds you up to where you're uncomfortable. The defense is playing extremely well. You know who else is playing really well here today? Who? The band. They have sound they, great. They, they this have. is the first pep band that I can remember, buddy. They broke out a little ELO, Electric Light Orchestra. They're number one in my book. And three ball. That one's going to be in and out, put up there by Grant Schrader. As the rebound comes out to Kenton. Gavin Payne trying to attack the basket. That's going to be no good. Erford gets the miss. It's the outlet for Schrader. Schrader back to Erford. Erford lets fly from deep, and he will bury the Kenton loose three-pointer. Yeah, rise and fire, 2-4. Another three ball. He's got himself eight points here in the early going. 25-7, a lot of contact inside. We, we will get a whistle and a foul. Yeah, Westrick a little bit slow to get up. Big Dave. Got to get up right away. Don't let those little guys know they knocked you down. Already with that uh, knee brace coming back from an injury. Yep. Good to see Big Dave. He's going to be all right. Went to, since they went to the bench, gestured to the bench and asked for uh, a replacement. That trainer comes over, takes a look at him. That looks like he's going to be fine. Step back three from the top of the key is going to be no good by Ethan Yoder. And the Titans are going to bring this one into the front court. Schrader with it. It's the lob. Ball's going to be knocked away, but we'll get a whistle. I'm pretty sure Yoder fouled him. Now, usually if you jump over top someone's back and knock the ball loose, that, that's a foul. But remember, we've got to embrace physicality, right? That's right. So you just got to play through it if you're out of Blandor. It's going to be the first on Yoder, first whistled against the Wildcats here with 6.40 left to go. Opening half on our ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Inside off the inbound, it's Erford again. It's Caden Erford already in double digits. I'm always amazed when big scorers are able to catch passes so close to the basket on inbounds. Got to do a better job defensively. Kenton's going to throw this one away against the OG pressure. So the Titans lead by 20, have the basketball back. Well, one of the problems that this Kenton team has had, turnovers, and you take a look at the early part of this basketball game, that has been the story of it. Just way too many turnovers for this Kenton group. OG up 20, playing their final regular season game tonight, as is Kenton. There's White from the elbow, through a double or triple team inside, but a whistle well before his shot. And this is going to go on Trenton DeLong. It's going to be his first, team second. And taking care of the basketball, so important for everybody, especially Kenton, who averages 15 turnovers a game. And what a pass by Erdford, right? That's what they're going to call that, right? Tomorrow, watching film coach, that was a pass. And Tommaso is able to score. Layup on the other end is going to be no good. Contact after the shot. And what uh, Miles, along with everyone else, wants to see in this situation, Dave Westrick back out onto the floor for the Titans. Yeah, big Dave come back in, comes back into the game. See if they can get him involved. He's doing a good job of lurking underneath the basket. White thought about giving it to him instead, gets it out to the wing, gets the basketball back here, directs some traffic, Erford with it. Really? Erford wanted to get it back to White, now Colin has it. Yeah, that'll put some stress on your defense with Erford and White on the same side. White's runner in the lane rolls out. So that one rattled around the cylinder but didn't fall through, and now the Wildcats with it, trying to get something going on offense, down 29-7 on our ultimate outdoor scoreboard. Johnston with it, comes top of the key, tries to reset the offense. One did a cutter on that right side, gives it over to Ethan Yoder. Yeah, trying to run those back cuts, but the problem is 
The help side defense for Ottawa Glandorf is just so spectacular. There's nothing there. Going to have to reverse the ball quickly and see if you can get it that way. Yoder's pass comes back over for Stephen Piper. Now deep three is up and good by Blaine Bushong. A 35% shooter on the year, 100% that time. And again are threes. There's one on the opposite end by Alex Wagner. And those have been Kent Moose three-pointers. Kent Moose is Hardin County's home for great food fellowship and friends. That's the Kent Moose 428 in Kenton. And there's going to be another Kent Moose three-pointer. That's a three for me. A three for you. That's a three for all <laughs> here. Threes for just about everyone. Now Colin White trying to get involved. Thought he was going to bank that one in. Instead just rims out. Now Kenton with it. Payne works that right side into the paint, able to pivot around, able to go up and around. Erford and scores. And so Piper with it, not Payne. And crafty little move by Piper, spinning back with a little Jay Burson like scoop shot. Makes it 32 15, our ultimate outdoor scoreboard as we near 340 left to go, opening half. Not a whole lot of stoppages to speak of in this one so far. White got his defender in the air, gets the kick out. Here's Erford from deep, and he will bury the Kent Moose three-pointer. That's his third of the night. Now only seven more to go, Caden. We're here. What a great night that was when he hit 10, set the record. His team has seven so far. Kenton trying to match. The Wildcats have three. It, it, Randy, I'm trying to think, too. How many of these threes that they've shot have had a hand in their face? That's been a lot. They're not a lot of them, right? They've had clean looks. And when you have clean looks, you should bury them, right? So yeah. you got to credit the offensive execution of this OG group. And they got the ball in offense right now, trying to inbound it. They'll throw it up top of the key for Mag. Mag with a handoff to White. White's going to have it knocked away. Able to get it back, gathers it back into the basket, rolls off the rim. And now Kenton with it as they push. Long lob ahead, reverse layup, high off the glass, rolls off. As Ethan Yoder couldn't get it to go down the cylinder. It was a very athletic looking play, just couldn't get it to finish. Yoder with the reverse. And now White's going to have his pocket picked again. Piper goes behind the back with a dribble. Wild shot's going to be no good, but we will see a couple of these famous recipe chicken free throws. Now they have Piper listed at six foot, but I think that might be wishful thinking for the roster, but he is fearless, isn't he? He is. So Stephen Piper at the line. That is the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. See Lee's famous recipe chicken in the line. Wapak Devils and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken or home style happens here. I was down in Lima this week, Randy and I was gonna go to Lee's, but there was 12 cars in line for that drive through <laughs> People in Lima know how good Lee's is. Couple free throws there from Piper, make it 35-17. We have a uh, mutual friend in the radio business who's visited, what, three of the four? That's right, hasn't been to the Delphus one yet, though. That's because he hasn't done a game at Delphus yet, but he will. I think a lot of people will with the Elwers doing a great job. How about that basketball team? That shot last week to win the MAC championship by Cam Elwer. Fantastic stuff. And that's fantastic also by Gavin Payne, who we said had to be a big pain, and he is with 10 points early. Yeah, that's what I was going to mention. Already in double digits, couple of twos, couple of threes. Canton trying to stay in this one. Wildcats down 35-19. So we play under two to go corner three. That one's going to hit front of the iron. Mag fighting for the rebound. Spins around. Can't get the put back to go. But Ross Mag is going to head to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Well, that's going to make the family real proud because did you see that little nifty post move without moving at pivot foot? He went all the way from the middle of the key all the way to the low block. Nice fundamental footwork for post play by Mag. So here is Ross Mag, the 6'3 junior. His first free throw is good. That is his first point of the night. So he becomes the sixth a different player to score. But before the second one, we'll have a timeout on the floor. So we'll take one as well. Minute 54 to play before halftime. 36 19 OG in front. We'll take a break here at WOSF. Minute 54.
four left to go before halftime. Ross Mag at the line to shoot his uh, second of two Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. That one is going to be no good. This cat will come up with the miss. Now they've got the basketball step back. And the Kenton Moose three on the way is no good. And now Colin White might have got away with a high dribble. Gets the dish out to the wing. Ball off the miss is going to be poked out. Trader with it as the Titans will reset their offense. Erford circles around back to White. It's that quick pass into the corner. Trader goes up from the lane. Couldn't get it to go. And now Kenton with it. And they'll bring the ball into the front court. Bushong works that right side. Pass is going to go through the hands of Yoder and out of bounds, and it's another turnover charged to Kenton. Boy, you said that enough, haven't you? Unfortunately. Turnover after turnover for Kenton, and Coach Miller got to just be beside himself. 36-19, they trail. Here's White through the lane, able to get the bucket. Now that first step that he has is very explosive. But the lob and the layup, a good play there. Gavin Payne able to score. A nice pass by Piper to get it back to 17. Trader comes around the perimeter, he's going to back up, trying to find Tomazos. Tomazos has White, the double team sets a screen. Ball's then knocked out of his hands. It's going to roll all the way to the Kenton bench before it goes out of bounds. It'll force the Titans to inbound. 34 and a half seconds left to go before halftime. Uh, do you kind of dribble it out and take the last shot here? At the end of the first quarter, they elected to shoot it a little bit early. We've seen them time and time again execute this situation correctly. And it looks like maybe that's what OG is going to do here with this comfortable lead. Mag has it here, but before we get that, we're going to have ourselves another foul. It's Colin White is going to be knocked to the floor with 20.8 to go. A nice sportsmanship by Yoder going over and picking him up. And Dawson Miller, look, in roller derby, you can go through guys, right? <laughs> but in basketball, you have to go around screens. You, you cannot hit the jammer to the ground. That is the fifth on Kenton, so that will send Colin White to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Visit Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, the Lima Wapak Devils in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. White will split the free throws, and it will give Kenton the opportunity here in the final 18 seconds of the half to do something with the basketball. Now, one, two, two to try to you know, get Kenton to eat the clock. It creates a bad shot. Now, OG has another opportunity, but they turn it over. Now, Kenton, one more try with the left hand. That one's going to go off the side of the backboard for Yoder. Three-quarter court shot will hit the iron, but that is it as we have reached the half with Ottawa Glandorf leading this one from the start. 39-21. Titans lead Kenton. We'll take a break and have the second half for you when we return here on WOSF. Well, welcome back to the Supreme Court here in Ottawa, Glandor. 39-21, the Titans lead Kenton here at the half. Brady Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you. Final Friday of the regular season, high school boys basketball. Girls take center stage on a Saturday. Sectional championship games at varying times all around the area. Miles and I are going to be back with you a week from tonight. We learned our first tournament assignment as our crew heads to Spencerville for sectional final action. A good backdoor pass. And about a little dunk delicious to begin the second half. Yo, want to see something cool? Yes, we do. 20 point lead for the Titans and now foul on the other end. Well, how many times have we seen that though? You come out of end of a quarter, end of a half, or beginning of a half, right? You run that backdoor cut. You think kids would learn this, right? Like they might go a backdoor cut at some point in time. You see it time and time again. So here is Gavin Payne. He's going to knock down the first of what will be two Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throws. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, the Lima Wapak Devils of St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken or home style happens here. And a game tonight also brought to you by Dale's Concrete Decorative Stamping and Lipstick. See them for all your commercial and residential 
concrete needs as the need for baskets continues for the Titans as Colin White get in and score once again. Yeah, another turnover by Kenton off of the bucket. A little pressure by OG and Randy trying to think of anyone that has a longer first step when he attacks the basket here in North Northwest Ohio than Colin White. He absolutely eats up all kinds of territory. Yeah, just that big, like you said, that big first step and that glide able to help out here. It's Erford will step back, fires away from deep. That's going to be no good. Kent trying to push in transition. Nifty pass underneath the basket leads to the bucket. Now Piper has been very effective in the open floor for Kenton. Just a junior, so he'll be back to lead the offense. And Yoder able to finish with a score. Tomazos on the other end will score for the Titans. Now, Tomazos making a two-pointer that time, which is rare. So good from behind the arc, but shows that he can uh, hit it from anywhere on the floor. Top of the key, Gavin Payne tried the three-pointer. That's going to be no good, and the Titans with it. They're up 45-24, six and a half minutes left to go on our scoreboard tonight, brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchen. A tremendous back screen by Erfer to get him free. Schrader able to score there, extends that lead 47 to 24. Kent being a little patient here, trying to work their offense. Gavin Payne's had a nice night, trying to flip that up and under, couldn't get it to go. Now Erford with the pass ahead, there's Tomazos in the wing, gives into the corner. As this one is going to be taken by Grant Schrader. Now we'll have a substitution coming in here for OG. Connor Kitchen is going to return to the lineup. As Dave Westring is going to sit down again. We saw Westring slip and fall. Coaching staff, training staff took a look, uh, took a look at that uh, knee with the brace. You wonder how much he will go here tonight as the first Kent Moose three pointer of the second half is made by Caden Erford. Yeah, just simple inbounds, get it in, and then Erford, who entered it, went to the corner. Un all by himself, unmolested, easy three ball. Miller brought the ball into the front court for Kenton. Back up now to Piper. Piper with a spin, hangs in the air, try to hit that one a little too strong. Erford has another miss, brings this one into the front court. Erford goes behind the back. He's going to be tangled up with Piper, and it looks like Stephen Piper is going to be guilty of the foul. It's kind of unfair, isn't it? You're 6'4", and you have the ability to Handled that well on a perimeter. Makes it awfully tough to guard. And of course, the easy foul on that one because the size differential and the skill differential, mm -hmm. easy. It's Tomazos, Tomazos gets into the paint, gets the kick out. Fortman with a kick, here's Connor Kitchen as his three hits off the side of the iron. Dawson Miller able to bring this one into the front court, Miller it over to Payne. Payne trying to get to the inside out. And three ball up no good that time by Miller. Another one and done as the Titans come away with the basketball. Yeah, this shows you the length, how important it is for OG. And the second three-pointer of the quarter made by Kate Erford. Again, the three-pointers tonight are brought to you by the Kenton Moose. The Kenton Moose Family Center is Hardin County's home for great food fellowship and friends. That's the Kent Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at KentMoose428.com. Now the moose, right? What I gotta ask, Randy, who's your favorite moose ever? Ooh. It's gotta be Rocky, right? Bullwinkle. Or Bull Bullwinkle. Yeah, right. yeah. Sorry, okay, Bullwinkle. Bullwinkle, okay. What about Marty Moose from vacation? Nah, nah I'm still Bullwinkle. Nah, I'm gonna go with Chocolate Moose. That's Ooh. my favorite. Well, now it's Alex Wagner getting involved. He's going to hit his second Kent Moose three-pointer of the night. OG piling on now, 56-24 on the Ultimate Outdoor scoreboard. Just over four to go in our third quarter. My favorite number for all these OG players, three, has been a barrage from behind the arc. They've got ten as a team, and now this one's going to be waved off. Oh, they're going to count it. Excuse me. And Callen, after he finished, gave a little six-gun shoot. Like, yep, count that. Uh, first, the official pointed on the floor. I thought the foul came on the floor, but might have been the abbreviated count the bucket call. 
So White will step to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. And leaves the free throw short. As Ethan Yoder comes up with the rebound, and now we're going to have ourselves a timeout on the floor. So we'll take it as well. 3.54 to go, third quarter, all OG tonight. We'll be back on WOSF. Now, well, partner, you like to say the teams trailing are snacking on danger. <laughs> what are they snacking on if Kenton's down 58-24? Uh, it's a buffet of danger <laughs> is what it is. Seven-course meal of danger. Trying to get something going offensively, and they will answer following the timeout as Ethan Yoder will hit his first Kenton Moose three-pointer of the night. Now, Yoder likes two. He likes two, but he really loves the three. 40% from behind the arc on the year. Makes it 58-27 here, three and a half to go, third quarter. Jab step by Carolyn White. Kick out to the wing where the three's no good. White will follow with the miss, though, and puts it back up and in. I get the feeling that OG wants desperately for Kitchen to hit a three ball from behind the arc tonight. There's a drive. Layup's going to hit the bottom side of the rim, but there's contact under the basket. We'll have an OG foul on Alex Wagner. It's going to be his first. And we will see Blaine Bouchon going to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. First one is up and good. So Bouchon now with four points. So free throws tonight brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, the Limewall Opec Delvis in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Sixty to twenty-nine here. As we see some teams off the bench there, and the great pass underneath leads to the basket for Colin White. That nice pass by Kitchen to find Colin White streaking to that low block. Good drive and a score there. Steven Piper continuing to work hard. Piper now up to six, I believe. Yeah, Piper's been impressive, and so has Gavin Payne and Yoder. Steals. Kent comes away with a basketball. Payne the trail. It's inside, and the layup's going to be no good. White mishandled the rebound at first, but he's going to get it back. Leads the break right to the basket. And how about one more for good measure? Oh, not one, not two, but three. Dunkalicious, Colin White. Good thing they got the breakaway rims. Kind of hung on that one for an extra moment. White's up to 22 points here tonight. This is some more substitutions ready to check in for the Titans. Uh, our good friend and colleague, Mark Shine, on the way here, he texts me, he goes, what's the over-under on Colin White dunks tonight? I said three. He said, I kind of like the over on that one. Well, still going to have a fourth quarter, although he's going to sit down now with 2.03 to go in our third, 64-31. As a look inside, Ken able to come back with a basket. You know, Gavin Payne has showed up in a big way for Kenton here tonight. Heard a lot about his game, and it's been impressive now up to 15 points. And he's going to lead the way for the Wildcats. So with those black and red jerseys, this is so hard not calling them Bearcats. I've almost done it twice <laughs> in this game. It's a kick out and yet another Kent Moose three-pointer for Caden Erfer. That is his sixth of the night. Caden Erfer says, I am the king of three. All must bow before me. Now we'll get a whistle, and it looks like a ball out of bounds. It's another turnover charge to Kenton. Uh, do you let him keep gunning it, see if he can break his own record of 10? He's got six before the end of the third. I'm all for it. I like seeing records. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Here's Connor Kitchen. He's going to try to hit one, and he does. And that's going to get everyone off the feet. So the senior who got the call to start tonight Knocks down the Kenton Moose three-pointer. Oh, that brought everybody up at the Supreme Court. Loving the fact that Kitchen delivered. 
So now 70 to 33. Here is Piper. Piper trying to go baseline. Now he's going to come back, gets into the free throw line. Goes to the left hand. That's going to be no good. Ball's going to be safe from going out of bounds under the basket. Runner inside. No good by Bushong. Now the ball's lost out of bounds. Clock will continue to run. A running clock situation. Again, our game tonight brought to you by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick. See them from commercial and residential concrete needs. A running clock. It'll be tough for Erfer to get some more three ball attempts. And there's Kitchen. He's cooking now. He's up to five. Stends that lead with a couple of baskets here. Now one more attempt, and that three ball, no good. Erford trying to get up court. Stops and pops a step inside the timeline. It is no good, and that's how our third quarter will end. 72-33. OG takes a big lead into the fourth quarter. We'll take a timeout here at WOSF. Ottawa Glandorf in front of Kenton here. Eight minutes left to go in this one as the uh, Titans are in a pretty favorable position here to make it three years straight of being perfect in the WBL boys basketball. Well, it is 2024 election season, so let's do like they do in uh, the election night. Let's go ahead and project that OG is going to win this one. And trying to get a good look inside. It's going to lead to a basket here for Kenton. As Trenton DeLong is going to score for the first time tonight. DeLong's going to step to our least famous recipe chicken free throw line. DeLong will try to convert the three point play here. And the free throw is going to be no good. 72 35. Now the question is. How long do the starters remain in the lineup? Is Westrick trying to fire away from deep? That's going to be no good. White's going to out hustle everyone to come away with a miss. White trying to clear out. Might be looking for the fourth dunk of the night. Nope, they're going to give Westrick another opportunity. That one's going to be partially deflected. Gets it one more time. Lost the handle, but found a teammate. Over the top is Erford. Erford gets the kick out. And three balls going to be no good that time. It is Kent who comes away with a miss. That's not often you see a 6'7 guy behind the arc get his shot blocked, but Big Dave was trying to launch it, and everybody from Kenton knew it. Corbin Johnston trying to find somewhere to go with the basketball. Gave it to Piper. Stephen Piper will find Gavin Payne. Payne's had a good night offensively to the basket. Lays it up and in. Now about the use of the left hand on that one by Payne. Payne now with 17 for Kenton as White's going to get inside and he's going to draw the foul. So they're going to call that on Piper. That's going to be, I believe, his fourth. And they do put four on there. So it sends Colin White to the free throw line. Once again, we want to tell you that our free throw line tonight brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, the Lima Wapak Devils in St. Mary's. Call Lee's Roger Catering Needs, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Let's see some of the uh, regulars for OG now slowly starting to be taken out of the lineup. Nice round of applause for both Dave Westring and I believe Grady Tomazos. Free throw is going to be no good, but the Titans are going to come away with a miss. Reset as we're down to five and a half minutes to play. It's a kick out and the three good by Alex Wagner. That's his third of the night. Now yeah, Wagner, not just a shot taker, a shot maker. And a three-pointer set have been brought to you by the Kent Moose Family Center. The Kent Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kent Moose 428 in Kenton. Online at KentonMoose428.com. And now five fresh bodies ready to check in for OG as their appreciative fans will give their regulars and seniors a nice uh, round of applause as they exit the home court.
for the last time in the regular season. And new rules for sectionals. They will get one more home game. That'll be uh, played as uh, a tournament game, quote unquote, where kind of lose some of the luster of the tournament, but uh, reward teams for having good seasons. I kind of like the neutral atmosphere, right? That always felt like a tournament. As the lay layup's going to be no good on the other end. Yeah, you miss kind of some of the atmosphere. You have four teams coming to a neutral site. So here is Stephen Piper heading to Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. His first one is good. So Stephen Piper now with seven. Kenton's starting to make a few changes as well. If you're Tyson McLaughlin, though, you have to be happy with where your team is at rolling into the tournament, right? They were dialed mm -hmm. in defensively. And they've got a third scorer now. You don't have to just rely on two guys to carry the whole offense. There's many other guys that teams have to worry about. I really like their chances moving forward. There is a steal as Kenton able to bring the ball into the front court. Kent loose three from the wings, gonna be no good. As Holden Aldridge will hold the ball high off the miss. As the Titans are gonna give you the Van Buren or Elmwood right here next week in a sectional final. We know again in Division Two for Kenton, they're gonna be on the road. The team they saw in the uh, regular season, the WBL in St. Mary's. As Dawson Miller will hit the Kent Moose three-pointer. And a junior who will be back with this uh, team next year shows that he's going to be someone that they can count on offensively. As Kenton will end the regular season at 500. So look inside as the basket is going to be good by Brady Fortman. It's two and a half minutes left to play. To drive into the lane and we'll get a whistle and a foul. That's going to lead to a couple more of these famous rescue chicken free throws as Dawson Miller will head to the line. So here is Miller. And the first one is good. So Dawson Miller with four points late. Check again for Kevin. Number 10, Lucas Anderson. So Lucas Anderson. And number 22, Braylon Wyoming. One of the new players in. Second least famous recipe chicken free throw is no good, but Kent will come up with the offensive rebound. Three ball, up, no good. As here's Fortman out of the pack with the basketball. Fortman trying to go to the basket, went to the wraparound pass, but it's going to be knocked out of bounds. This clock continues to run here. Under a minute and a half left to go. And one more time, we want to tell you that a game tonight has been brought to you by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick. See them from commercial and residential concrete needs as OG has one more score this time. The shape of Ross Mag, that's Mag's first field goal tonight, had a free throw earlier. He's got three, so 80 to 43 are the minute to go. Long three is good as Dawson Miller hits his second Kent Moose three pointer of the night. OG will have to run off the final 50 seconds or so. Fortman with a pass to the left side is right now. Titans just working this around the perimeter. It's going to lead to the runner and the bucket. It's 82 46 with the latest score there. Kent trying to leave some of their regulars in. So here's one out, and we'll get a push and a foul. Some of the officials will let the final few seconds run off here with an inbound. One more three ball, no good offensive rebound. is going to be blocked on the putback on our final tonight. We'll have the Titans of Ottawa-Glandorf winning. 
yet another WBL title. They finish off a third consecutive year perfect in the WBL as they knock off Kenton this evening, 82 to 46. We'll take a timeout when we come back. We'll head down to the court. We're going to check in with our Stallion Insurance Hustle Award winner when we return here in WOSF. Uh, here with Caden Erford. Caden, special night here. Three in a row. Give me some of the emotions that you're feeling right now. Uh, you know, it's, it's bittersweet, obviously. It's the best that could have happened, but it's just, it's really a surreal experience to play here in front of this crowd with these this group of seniors. And I mean, I want to trade them for the world. We've put in from when we were kindergarten. I mean, it's just been, ever since then, we've just been working together. We gel. I mean, it's it, 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 it paid off. Yeah, what really paid off is defensively early in this basketball game. Best you guys have played defensively all year long, you think? Uh, definitely up there, definitely up there. I think it was 17-4-2 to 4, 2 at one point. I mean, that was our focus all week was execution and defense and just attention to detail, and I thought we did a really good job of that in the first quarter. You guys just got done taking your picture with the student body and with your team underneath the basket. How cool is that student body? They do a great job of supporting you guys week in, week out. They do, and they don't, they don't get enough credit for what they do every game, no matter where it's at. They're there, and it's just, it really, I think we take it for granted sometimes because not every school has that, and it's just, it's good to take a step back and look at it in the big picture every once in a while, and I, I think tonight we did that. You guys are, no, uh, no secret about making a deep run in the tournament, right? You guys do it year in, year out. What's it going to take for it this year for you guys to make it all the way to Dayton again? <clears throat> uh, I think the biggest thing is just team chemistry, and I think we have really good team chemistry. Uh, Coach prides himself on uh, just keeping the team together, making sure that we're working as one unit and not individuals, and I think we have a group of guys that work as one unit really well together. One last thing tonight, Everett. He was heckling you here. He says you got to make it. Half court shot. Which basket you want to go at? This one right here. Half court shot. Everett, you ready? Everett, he's going to make it this time. Caden Erford, half court shot. Oh, oh. Hey, that was a lot closer. You made Everett proud. Congratulations. Thank you. Brady Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you one more time here from the Supreme Court as the Titans of Ottawa Glandor make it three straight perfect runs in the WBL. Partner, we heard it here on Senior Night. We talked about all the accolades for this big senior class. And I think about the only thing missing was that state championship. They've oh. had three trips to uh, mm -hmm. Columbus slash Dayton, or maybe all Dayton now. I think they've played the tournament there enough times. And... Uh, feel like this team's got one more run left in it. Yeah, they get good guard play. They're tremendous defensively, right? They have the, a couple superstars they can rely on. It's a really good team. And plus, Randy, if you looked at them at the beginning of the year, they had a lot of question marks. I don't think there's a lot of question marks now. Yeah, offensively playing well. Defensively, they played all year. So they're yeah. going to uh, wait out a sectional semifinal. We mentioned a couple of times through the night, either Van Buren or Elmwood will come back here to Herm Miller Gymnasium for a sectional championship game in Division Three, and then uh, with the win, they'll move on to the district uh, back in Lima Senior. Let's talk about Kenton a little bit tonight. 17 tonight on Gavin Payne. I think you and I both pretty uh, impressed with him. They'll make the trip to St. Mary's for a sectional championship game a week for tonight. It's going to have to be an up and down perimeter game because St. Mary's got the big guys inside, right? So if it comes a station to station game, you like St. Mary's, but if Kenton can get them to go up and down, I like Kenton's chances. So again, that final tonight, 82-46 OG against the win makes it three straight runs in the WBL. So for my partner, Miles Halliday, and these two fun guys we've gotten to work with tonight, I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching here on WOSN.